the Scripps School of Journalism in the Schoonover Center in Athens, Ohio. This is Gen Z up to the ballot. Welcome to the first edition of Gen Z up to the ballot. I'm Shane Scalfaro. Now with the presidential election just under a month away, questions, discussions, and debates continue to be ongoing, especially among young voters. As a matter of fact, according to a circle at Tufts University, there are more than 8 million potential new voters since the 2022 midterms. That brings the total amount of Gen Z voters to almost 41 million in 2024, forging a new wave of impactful young voters to possibly determine the upcoming presidential election. So, as you might guess, a major part of the upcoming election is the new voters that now have a chance to have their voices heard. But what exactly are those voices saying? Up to the ballot reporter Sullivan Beach has the report. I'm Sullivan Beach and with things heating up at the presidential race, I came out here to College Green at Ohio University to ask Gen Z students about their thoughts on the upcoming election. Uh, honestly, I feel like there's a lot of uh, tension involved with it. There's, uh, there's a bunch of people that are either the Democrats or the Republicans. You know, there's a lot of fake news out there, but there's also a lot of truth to it. Um, honestly, I think that people our age should really be voting. I think being in Athens, it makes it a little more like blue, um, which I think will be interesting to see like the posters and the debates and the opinions come out. Many Gen Zers who were 17 in 2020 and not quite old enough to vote were left frustrated that they were not able to vote in that major election between former President Trump and current President Biden. An article by CircleTufts.edu says that 8 million new Gen Zers will be eligible to vote in 2024, totaling in 41 million Gen Z voters this year. With a large new chunk of Gen Zers being excluded from past consequential elections, have older politicians in our government been overlooking issues that affect Gen Zers? I feel like somebody of that age to think that they would, you know, kind of understand like the state that we're in and like, I don't know, especially like with the housing crisis and stuff, like, you know, I mean, I'm worried like, when I graduate, am I gonna be able to like have a home anytime soon or like stuff like that? And it just feels like, yeah, we're definitely kind of an overlooked portion of the population. Like looking into the future, like there's not really much being changed that will like make any significant difference, like especially for climate change. Going off of that generational gap between the government and Gen Z that you could see felt by those students, a poll by CNN says that 19% of voters under the age of 35 feel uncertain about who they want to vote for, and 12% of people over the age of 35 feel uncertain about who they are voting for. With all these poll numbers, it is really easy to wonder A, how are they really getting all of these percentages, and B, are they really getting a clear idea of who Gen Z is voting for in a new digital age? Well, according to an article by Pew Research Center on polling, they said that many polling organizations have switched to contacting people primarily through the phone. This is commonly known as random digit dialing. One student says that a lot of young people probably do not answer any of these types of calls. No, I definitely think, I, I'm, I definitely think the polls are, could be very easily skewed either way. Like, and yeah, very much like, again, like, yeah, the telemarketing, like none of us probably answer to telemarketers. The New York Times election poll shows Kamala Harris leading the polls by 3%, totaling in 49% of the polls, while Trump is at 46%. And with Gen Z ready to step up and vote this year, we will have to wait and see how Gen Z will impact this year's election. Reporting for Gen Z up to the ballot, I'm Sully Beach. With those students all having different opinions on what issues are being overlooked by the government and if the election polls are accurate, we'll have to wait and see how Gen Z responds to the call to vote this year. Now that we have heard from the young voices, up to the ballot special reporter Reese Thompson spoke with some senior voices right here in Athens who have mixed feelings about passing the voter torch to the younger generation, sprinkled in with a little bit of advice. Three residents of the Laurel Nursing Home have reflected on their new colleagues at the voting booths, and we wanted to get their thoughts. Chuck Wally, Edward Fichikawa, and Linda Caldwell said the world is a bit different from when they first cast a ballot. Our, our country is just in a different uh, condition, and it scares me. And at the age I am, you know, I think about my kids and my grandkids. Her grandkids are likely part of Generation Z, people ages 18 through 27 who can hit the polls in larger numbers than four years ago, with the youngest members now eligible to grab a voter ID. The generation now is so smart, nothing's out of their reach. 
They can go for anything they want to go for. Fajikawa and Wally, perhaps like older generations, looked at them, view the new voting block with skepticism. That's a little bit on the scary side, to tell you the truth, uh, because a lot of them don't really understand what's going on. Your generation is more of a free spirit type of a generation who really doesn't care what happens next. Fudgy Kaba believes Gen Z's, quote, free-spirited outlook on life can be a bad thing without a sense of direction. But the group does have advice for the youngest voting generation. Well, I think I have a, a, a goal in life, and you have to know where you're going, and you have to have some feeling about what you want to do. There comes a time when you have to make your own decision, and uh, you have to decide what's right or wrong. Sooner or later, their generation has to take over, so they have to learn, and the only way to learn is experience. Your generation is going to be um, uh, very influ influential on in what happens, and I think a lot of them are going for Harris. Whether silent generation, boomer, or Gen Z, all will have the opportunity to participate in democracy come November. Reporting for Gen Zers up to the ballot, I'm Reese Thompson in Athens. Director of polling at the Harvard Kennedy School Institute says he is fairly optimistic to see a robust turnout in young voters this election. Early voting starts in Ohio today through November 3rd. Still to come, there's more including how Hurricane Helene is affecting voter turnout and when Gen Z up the ballot comes back after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Gen Z Up to the Ballot. Ahead of the November presidential election, Republicans are challenging all aspects of mail-in voting in battleground states. Mail-in and absentee voting reached new levels in 2020 during the pandemic. Now, a wave of lawsuits over the popular vote casting method this year is laying the groundwork for potential challenges to come to the election's outcome. Swing states like North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Michigan are all seeing a high volume of mail-in and absentee voting. In battleground states, that has prompted multiple lawsuits from Republicans. They're challenging everything from whether mail-in ballot envelopes are properly sealed to whether they are postmarked correctly. Democrats have also been waging legal fights to ensure these votes are counted. Another story we are keeping up with is the effects Hurricane Helene has on people getting out to vote. Monday, the North Carolina State Board of Elections approved a series of emergency measures to ensure victims of Hurricane Helene can vote in the 2024 presidential election. The provisions allow 13 counties to modify early voting and Election Day voting sites to accommodate local conditions. More now with Laura Leslie. State Elections Director Karen Brinson-Bell says every county will have at least one early voting site, but road damage may make it hard to get there. We may need to take voting to the people. Uh, because they may not be able to access um, their voting sites easily. The counties covered by the emergency resolution are Ash, Avery, Buncombe, Haywood, Henderson, Madison, McDowell, Mitchell, Polk, Rutherford, Transylvania, Watauga, and Yancey counties. In those counties, the Bipartisan County Elections Board can choose to make voting laws more flexible to respond to the disaster, like making it easier to vote by mail or sending voter assistance teams to relief centers and shelters. Republican board member Stacey Eggers lives in Watauga County. We will continue to make voting accessible to the voters. And whether we need four-wheelers, horses, or helicopters, uh, the, this disaster highlights the need for consistency in our work and making sure that we get to the locations that the voters expect us to be. 
Bell said there are a total of nearly 300 early and election day voting sites in those counties. She couldn't say yet how many may be unusable because they're working on workarounds like heavy duty tents. Maybe that you know, a, a site is no longer usable because it was damaged in the storm, or perhaps it's being used for emergency purposes. We may be still able to use that lot, that parking lot, that you know, land to erect a temporary facility and still be able to use uh, the site. Bell said they're working with federal and state emergency management to make sure voting sites have everything they need. Be it a temporary facility to hold voting in, be it temporary restrooms, um, be it generators, uh, whatever their needs are, we have been told that those will be fulfilled. Under the new measures, voters can request and receive an absentee ballot in person until November 4th. Relatives or legal guardians will also be able to hand deliver those ballots to other county board out of elections office until election day. We'll be back after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Now we're all out of time for this episode, but there's still more to come down the road. We'll be back on October 29th, where Reese Thompson will host the second episode of Gen Z Up to the Ballot, the podcast. And then on election day, November 5th, Reese will be hosting episode two of our news magazine show, You Won't Want to Miss It. And remember, while we bring you both facts and opinions at the end of the day, and in this case, at the end of the election, it's up to you to decide. I'm Chance Galfaro. Thanks for joining us, and have a great night.